Get us started with an opening statement and then take questions. Now I know why they call it Bedlam. Um, that's that's not a bottom team. That shows how good our league is. Uh, that is an extremely talented and very very well coached uh, OU team that played very well. Uh, I thought in the first half the fight was all theirs. I didn't think we fought very very hard. I thought they were physical. I thought they uh, they came at us and uh, really had us back on our heels, uh, really in all facets, both ends of the court. Uh, I think they had uh, 18 uh, points in the paint in the first half and made seven threes. And um, the second half then became a little different story. We were able to slow that process down a little bit. Um, but um, I told our team at halftime, let's just keep the game civil. And I tried in the first half to, to create a little tempo, and they exposed us. And uh, I did that by you know, running and jumping a little bit. And, and uh, then in the second half, we didn't do it as much and uh, just tried to sit down and guard. Um, and um, I felt like we would get shots. And then late, uh, what can you say about Juwan? We had the best player on the court. And uh, he scored 16 of our last 18. Uh, a night we fought foul trouble with Jeff. Um, literally set late in most of the night. And then, um, um, you know, Mitchell Solomon makes two big free throws. But uh, it was literally uh, uh, kind of space in the floor and, and creating some space for Juwan. And, and uh, he showed what, uh, what a good player does. And, and he was terrific tonight. You had some good crowds this year, but this one. The best you've seen. Yeah, I think it's our third sellout, if I'm not mistaken, and absolutely. I mean, it. The, to me, it's this is what makes college, the college experience special, is is rivalries. It it, it goes beyond the players and the coaches and the teams. It goes. It, it, it encompasses the universities, and in, and a whole state. And um, you, you're talking about a, a lot of alumni scattered around the state and. Uh, you know, people drove up from Texas for this and, and came down from Kansas and wherever they came from. And that's moving and that's special. And, and uh, you know, we hadn't been very competitive in this rivalry. And, um, uh, you know, we, we, were, uh, we were fortunate tonight. Coach, when you set goals for the season, and obviously it's been a grind in the Big 12 and you start out 0 and 6, now you find yourself at 7 and 7. Is there kind of a, okay, we're there now. We've, we've reached the, at least some sort of goal and go from there. Is, it, I is hope that not. a decomarcation kind of line? I hope not. I hope we haven't done that. I'm really proud because uh, we, we're we learning to fight. You know, and, and I think we were down 14. Um, I'm not sure during that 0-6 stretch or before that, this team would not have folded their tent. But we've continued to grind, and that's a, that's, that's a tribute to our leaders and Phil and Juwan, who were both in here, Leighton Hammond. Um, and we, don't, we didn't panic. And uh, uh, we're everyday guys. I don't look at it. I couldn't even told you our record, to be quite honest. I don't look at standings. Um, I don't pay much attention to anything that goes on. It is about the next game, and uh, it's the next practice. And... Are we better? Are we getting better? I think we're, we're, we're gaining confidence. And, and with confidence, you can do a lot of things. The first How much time Jawan wasn't getting that stuff in the lane, was it just simply you guys clearing it out better? Or how was yeah. he able to do that? Yeah. yeah, we, I, you know, I think that uh, uh, we created some space. Uh, we, we, we went more to our ball screen package rather than our kind of our half court sets. And, uh, uh, like first half, they just punched us. I mean, they were they were the aggressor, and they got to the ball. and And uh, Juwan got a couple looks in the first half, and he didn't make them. Uh, but again, that that stuff doesn't bother him. And and uh, you know, we just create a little space. And and uh, uh, Devon Dillard got a big offensive rebound on a miss, and and all of a sudden, you know, Juwan's going. Pretty good week for him. It's TCU, he hits the big shot there late, and, and then today, like I said, scores 16 straight. That's what really good players do. That's what really good players are, are, are supposed to make those type of plays. And in and, and a night that wasn't our best, um, 
to have a guy like that to be able to take over. And I thought Phil was terrific. And, and Jeff, even though he fought foul trouble, was terrific in, at, at, at their spots. And um, But you could put the ball in, in his hands, and, and he got you, got you what you needed. Did you feel like you settled for the three in the first half? Oh, way too much. I mean, we took 19 of them. That's what we talked about at halftime. Let's, let's be, be aggressive. We didn't put any foul pressure on them at all. Uh, we didn't force them to guard. Everything was after one or two passes. Uh, there wasn't much. Uh, there wasn't any flow, and uh, they had all the flow. They had all the momentum, and uh, give them the credit. They des- they deserve that credit as as much as uh, um, as, as us. But uh, they did. Gr- they did. A, they were they were dialed in defensively. And did a great job. Talk a little bit about Mitchell Solomon, if you would be not just because he hit the two free throws, but. He just seems to battle awfully hard almost every position. Well, and Stephen may help me here. I think we're shooting 37, teams are shooting 37 or 38 percent in league play with him on the court, and it's about 46 with him off the court. He doesn't make mistakes. He is very, very seldom ever out of, out of position. Uh, he, he's cerebral. We ask him, he gets put in a lot of ball screen coverages. He makes the right coverages. He competes. Never says boo about whether he scores 10 or whether he scores two. And uh, uh, Mitchell came a long way tonight because we're sitting in that timeout and it's either going to be a three or four point game. And we're talking about scenarios and he goes, I got this. And uh, pretty impressive. Which way did you think of Phil's final Big 12 Well, he was terrific in the first half. He kept us in it in the first half. Um, you know, it, it, and one of my assistant coaches in, the, in, in a timeout late said he's only got one shot in the second half. Um, we ran a shot to get him a – or ran a little play to get him a look. And, and I've got I've to do a better job of that, of, of not, not um, getting focused on one guy. But I've, I've got to get Phil's shots. But he was terrific. And uh, I know this meant a lot to him. Um, deservedly so. This young man's had a had a terrific, terrific career in uh, in, in Orange, and it's it's not over. But uh, uh, for him, Bedlam means a lot. Do you pay much attention to plus minus? All the time. Solomon, Lit- plus nineteen. Yeah, my, it's it's every game. I we 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 stat that out every single game, plus minus, and and I I I look at uh, f- not only starting fives. In plus minus, but I also look at uh, individuals as well. So yeah, it doesn't shock me. It's it's pretty much that every night with him. Since the uh, beginning of your tenure here, you've been very you know vocal about knowing you know the history and whatnot. What was it like to have Eddie Sutton sitting on the uh, sideline tonight? I told him before the game, this one's for him. That's a, that's that's special, man. That's that's uh, 806 wins. That's a guy that. Uh, um, and and everybody everybody in the business knows he's a Hall of Fame coach. That guy's deserves to be, should be, will be at some point uh, a Hall of Fame coach. And uh, you don't do what he's done at so many different places. Um, he's one of the, he's one of the reasons I've said it many times. You want to come to a place like this. You can't recreate overnight what he did here, and and with Mr. Iba and so on and so forth. That makes this a special place. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Go ahead. Juwan, what did you see late in the game that was different than what was out there earlier in the game that allowed you to attack the way you did? Um, I feel like I was just I was just more aggressive. Uh, in the second half, you know, I was looking more than I was in the first half. And so, I mean, it kind of got me looks that I was looking for um, when we needed it. So, I mean, and Coach drew up the right place, so I just tribute on it. You did most of your damage uh, in the last six or seven minutes. Um, did something open up to you? Did you make just a decision or? Uh, just confidence, uh, having that confidence in myself, uh, knowing I can make, make the shots because uh, I've been working on it, you know, being in the gym, just keep shooting, and just reps, reps, and so it finally just came. Do you know that you scored 16 straight points in one stretch there? Uh, and I was so involved in the game, I wouldn't really just 
um, just tagged on to that. But I was just just playing, just trying to get the win. Bill, did you know he scored 16 straight points? No. <laughs> that surprised me, but uh, that's – wow. Yeah, I didn't know that either. That's – wow. Impressive. How does it feel to get the first bet of a sweep since 2004? Um, you know, it, it's great. And um, just to share – that moment, you know, the fans after the game and, uh, you know, the team, that's just what it's all about. You know, that's what makes this, you know, moment so special. Um, but, you know, Oklahoma's a good team. They're very talented, and, you know, that game could have went either way. What was it like playing a game in which, I mean, you're on a pace to score 80, 85 points, and yet most of the game you're down, to, you know, mm -hmm. 8 to 10 points. Um, did you have, did you ever have a sense of when that was turning for you or just what was that like? Uh, I think offensively we knew we were fine. You know, we were going to score. That wasn't really our problem. We just knew we had to get a couple stops in a row. And so that's what we kept preaching timeouts is stop, stops. And if we could just get, you know, two or three in a row and then we felt like we could kind of just chip back at it. And um, I think you got to give OU credit. They made some great shots. They uh, made us work on defense and, um, you know, it was just a really back and forth game of two teams just uh, really just imposing their will on each other. Bill, you quipped after the, the Baylor game the fact that how much noisier this place could be if it had been packed. Mm -hmm. What was they? What do you think? It was it was probably the fun, most fun I've had uh, playing in a game since I've been here. And just um, just how we feed off the energy. You know, the fans were great. And I hope they can kind of see how much of a difference it makes. You know, when we were down trying to come back, their energy, you know, trying to bring us back in the game makes the world a difference to us. And, uh, you know, I can't say thank you enough to all the fans that came out and uh, helped us get a win tonight. What was it like having Marcus there then getting to celebrate with him afterwards? That, that was awesome. Uh, I just, I'm just very thankful that, you know, uh, he came back. You know, he's on all-star break. Uh, he could have been anywhere in the country, could have taken a vacation, could have. That's what a lot of guys do. You know, he came back to Stillwater. Um, and so it just kind of speaks, you know, I think to our friendship and just also how much he loves, you know, coming back, how much he loves this place. And, um, you know, I think um, it meant the world to me, you know, just to see him there supporting me. And obviously when he shows up, I want to, you know, try to impress him a little bit. Yeah, you know, it uh, can't um, be any better than that. You know, we got two wins and um, – both games were just a uh, dogfight, and uh, that's kind of how this rivalry is. Um, we've been on the short end of the stick, you know, the past couple years, but they've always been close and could have gone either way, and so uh, we were just kind of fortunate to be on the other end of it this time. John, you're not an Oklahoma kid, but it seems like you find a way to really get up for, for this. I think you scored 90 points against these guys in three games. Man, I just I like big games like this, you know, rivalry games. You know, I live for it. Um, it just – it's what I wake up for every day, you know, play basketball, uh, rivalry games, big games. So I try to show up for those. Phil, you, you, guys, guys, uh, you guys lost your first six conference games, and now you've evened your conference record. As a senior, what does it mean to have gotten to this point and have your goals really intact, uh, given the way things started? Yeah, I just think it you know, kind of speaks to the attitude of this team, the perseverance. We just didn't give up. We didn't make excuses. Um, we didn't complain. We just got better, you know, each and every day in practice. And you still got four games left to the regular season, so we're definitely not done. And, you know, you enjoy this game tonight, obviously. And then, uh, you know, we're off tomorrow. And then, you know, Monday we got to get ready for a K-State team. And it just never ends. You know, every night you got to be ready to go or um, you'll get popped. And so, um, you know, we enjoy this one for a little bit, and then you got to get ready to play, a, you know, another good game. Anything else? Thanks, Sean.